Amici al cuore tassellato ben ritrovati, Motocross My Pission parte col botto stasera con il primo round del campionato mondiale Supercross svoltosi a Birmingham. Cosa dire? Il VSX è un grande campionato con grandissimi piloti a partire da Ken Roxen che dopo vedremo in azione ma non vi voglio anticipare nulla. Per cui grandissimo spettacolo, grande pubblico e grande organizzazione. Intanto vi auguro buona visione e buon proseguimento. Motocross My Passion c'è! Amici appassionati dal cuore tassellato, un benvenuto a tutti, sono qua in compagnia e ospite del team Honda Nils presso il compound di Angelo Pellegrini e sono qua in compagnia con Fabio Derin, team manager appunto del team. Fabio, grande ciao. avventura, prima di tutto ciao. Ciao, ciao a tutti, eh, grazie. Grande avventura per te nel gestire una squadra importantissima con dei piloti che dopo su cui parleremo abbastanza sì. Sì, raccontaci grande, un pochettino questo percorso grande cambio per me un grande mm. cambio per me sono passato da essere meccanico comunque in HRC di, negli ultimi anni di Evans e Giacomo Gariboldi mi ha proposto di entrare in questo nuovo mondo del, del Supercross l'anno scorso come capo meccanico diciamo certo. e mi è piaciuta molto molto come, come idea alla fine dello scorso anno mi ha detto tu sarai il nuovo team manager come, di, come, responsabilità, come dire responsabilità di no, no è come dire di no Honda eh. RC con Giacomo Gariboldi cinque volte campione del mondo con Team Geyser e un'esperienza infinita e una grande passione soprattutto. Noi ci siamo visti appunto l'anno scorso nelle, nelle due prove del WSX, eh, appunto il campionato mondiale Supercross eh, targato FIM, grande organizzazione da parte di questi australiani che hanno messo dentro oltre che a tanta economia anche un'organizzazione impeccabile. L'abbiamo vissuta uh, tutti bene, noi come media, voi come, come, team, come team e anche i piloti De sono rimasti contenti. Devo dire che nessuno si aspettava un'organizzazione così impeccabile già dalla prima gara. Eh sì. È stato tutto perfetto, tutto impeccabile, 
non ci hanno fatto mancare nulla, no, ai piloti, no. meccanici, pubblico, tutto impeccabile. Giornalisti anche, anche perché tra parentesi sono appunto in contatto con Adam Bailey che è il CEO appunto del, dell'organizzazione, mando la mail e mi rispondono dopo mezza giornata. Cosa o o mezza, altri... mezza nottata perché... Sì, la nottata perché ci sono un po' di ore di differenza, <ride> sì. dice, per cui è così. Però sì, sono sì. tempestivi, per cui anche per chi lavora dentro a questo tipo di campionato non può che essere felice perché è apprezzato. Stanno, stanno facendo un grandissimo lavoro. Sì. Noi abbiamo avuto un meeting con loro qualche tempo fa e hanno, ci hanno fatto vedere il prospetto dei prossimi anni, hanno prospetto a lungo termine. Certo, nei prossimi cinque anni addirittura. Sì, sì. Eh. hanno già un calendario prefissato per i prossimi cinque anni e veramente impressionante quello che stanno facendo. Anche perché è bellissimo il format, ne parlo sempre con Michele Fanton perché commento sempre il supercross americano, lei mei. Monster Supercross e il format bellissime le gare del, del Supercross americano però è un format lungo quello che succede nel VSX invece sono, è molto più fruibile per il pubblico e anche per gli addetti ai lavori sì, è io una, penso è un mio personale pensiero quella è una delle cose principali mm. hanno creato uno show eh, sì. uno show di 3-4 ore dove non ci si annoia un secondo. Sì, anche perché le mance vengono rafficate ogni 5 minuti, hanno tre mance, sì. è un grosso effort per i piloti, sì, ma anche per sì. voi meccanici che dovete controllare poi alla fine della mance e avete 4-5 minuti per assestare il tutto. Non sì, è semplice. Quella, quella è una cosa che stiamo vedendo di come come fare il prossimo eh sì. anno perché veramente il tempo è veramente corto tra una mancia eh e l'altra sì. si può si, quella è l'unica cosa che si può migliorare ma senza stravolgere eh sì. tutto il format e quindi ma la cosa buona del, degli organizzatori è che ascoltano tantissimo i team e aggiustano e aggiustano sì, il tiro sì. cosa che non avviene in chiedono, altri frangenti chiedono tantissimo a noi certo. come è andata come va cosa c'è da migliorare e ascoltano molto. Poi sempre con il sorriso e poi sono tutti appassionati, io non posso far altro che elogiare questo tipo di campionato perché sarà un campionato nei prossimi anni che sarà sicuramente l'icona del supercross, diventerà l'icona del supercross, di questo ne sono convinto anche perché poi hanno portato tanta economia, parlano di 60 milioni di dollari spalmati appunto in questi anni. Cioè sono tanti 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 e sì. hanno creato anche una sorta di competizione con la Feld Entertainment per quanto riguarda il supercross americano perché anche loro da quest'anno hanno messo sui soldini eh. spaventati da questa nuova organizzazione Sai, tra quando, parentesi. Sì. quando sei l'unico promotore a fare uno sport eh, sì. puoi fare il bello e il cattivo tempo certo. quando hai un competitor eh. devi adattarti Bene, dopo questa piccola chiacchierata su quello che è stato il tuo percorso, quello che sarà il campionato, vorrei parlare dei piloti. Su alcuni abbiamo la sicurezza, ne su, manca uno. Ne manca uno, ne che, manca uno ma sta arrivando. Che a brevissimo <ride> diremo anche quello. Sì. Piloti. Eh, Jordi Dixier era sì. già confermato okay. dall'anno scorso, ha corso per noi. Eh, motocrossista, ma molto appassionato di supercross, sì. praticante di supercross e anche l'anno scorso manche dopo manche migliorava, si, chiaramente si, vedeva. si sta allenando molto, ho visto sui social per cui lo vedremo, lo vedremo sicuramente tra i protagonisti. Eh, C'è l'altro pilota che non possiamo menzionare, eh, Posso dire che ha un, ha un numero di tabella, ha un numero di tabella o faccia meno, faccia meno, perché da, mi ha già guardato meglio. male, perché meglio. sennò lo riconoscete subito. È troppo subito. facile, eh, è ecco. troppo facile. Siamo in compagnia anche di Kyle Peters, un pilota che io stimo tantissimo, l'ho seguito e è entrato a far parte del, del Pro Motocross, del Pro Supercross già dal 2011, 
correrà appunto per il tuo team, Uno di... grande pilota, l'abbiamo visto qua, vedrete siamo, alcune sì, immagini. Siamo, siamo proprio qui eh, in pista a fare i test in questi giorni con Kyle Peters che è uno dei due piloti per la 2 e mezzo. Ricordo quattro che... volte consecutivamente campione Arena Cross. Cosa dire? Eh, eh. È un pilota di sicuro talento, ha partecipato no. anche alle mie supercross, è stato reduce da un bruttissimo incidente a St. Louis, era rimasto semi paralizzato, tutti gli dicevano che non poteva più correre, invece lui con la forza di volontà, col sostegno dei genitori e del team, è rientrato e ha vinto immediatamente il primo Arena Cross fino ad arrivare al 2022. Per cui vi consiglio di andare a vedere le gare che ha effettuato sia nelle mei Supercross che nell'Arena Cross. È un pilota di tutto rispetto e sicuramente, come mi ha detto lui, vuole vincere il campionato. Per cui lui è lui, molto, molto, molto motivato. Convinto. Non è venuto per fare molto bene. Già da questi primi test, comunque lo stile di guida... Assomiglia, assomiglia, infatti Pazzesco. glielo ho detto, è rimasto, è rimasto contento, gli ho detto ma lo sai che in moto si è posizionato su una moto un po' come Jet Lawrence e lui mi ha fatto un sorriso, mi ha detto grazie, io ci sto provando, <ride> per cui diciamo che l'obiettivo è la quello. cosa che, si, che salta subito all'occhio è lo stile americano. Sì, assolutamente eh, sì. No. Sembrano nati per fare questo tipo di sport. Sono Sembrano pazzesco. collegati proprio con il mezzo, con il terreno. Io poi, lo sapete, per me il Supercross è lo spettacolo che mi esalta di più, per cui lo so che mi attiro sempre le critiche dei motocrossisti tradizionali. È così. Altro pilota, grandissimo nome anche lui che vedremo tra poco qua in Italia. Appunto, uh, sì, arriverà anche lui appena finisce di correre in America nell'Ama Supercross. È... Pilota Pro Circuit. Pilota Pro Circuit, Chris Blows. <ride> per cui un cosa, altro cosa pilotone, dire? un altro cosa dire, un altro pilotone che non ha tanto bisogno di essere presentato, è certo. sempre stato un pilota altamente competitivo, molto bravo, infatti è stato chiamato, visto le defezioni di questo team che ha avuto un inizio di stagione travagliatissimo con tutti i piloti infortunati, sì. hanno chiamato lui, lui si sta, si sta assestando, si sta ma difendendo. sono sicuro che ha un occhio già puntato per il VSX. Sì, sicuramente pensa molto al VSX. Eh, sì. Anche perché ci sono premi importanti, sponsor ce ne sono parecchi, poi cosa dire, un team come il tuo, eh, eh, chiaramente con dietro le quinte un Giacomo Gariboldi che ne sa, ne sa tanta. Sì, eh, non... e quando, quando io la cosa che più mi piace è che quando lui fa una cosa non la fa tanto per farla, sì. o si fa ai massimi livelli o non si fa. Già l'anno scorso mi aveva detto, perché ho detto porca miseria, sì, l'inizio va bene, un controllo, e lui mi diceva purtroppo non sono molto addentro al supercross, ho bisogno di fare un po' di rodaggio. Il rodaggio penso che l'abbia finito perché ha scelto dei piloti e non voglio sapere cosa, quanto sono costati, ma eh, grande squadra, anche perché poi il, 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 secondo, pilo, il secondo pilota. Il team, il compagno Compagno. di squadra di Tixie è un pilota di tutto rispetto, già ufficiale Honda KRC in America, per cui basta, non dico più niente. E eh, cosa dire altro Fabio? Più che darti in bocca al lupo, io seguirò come sai il campionato proprio da dentro, ci vedremo tutte tutte le volte e avremo modo di sviluppare ancora di più il discorso ma soprattutto esaltandoci di quello che vediamo e vivremo poi tra parentesi siamo, è un piacere estremo siamo tutti impazienti di cominciare sì. manca poco e non vediamo l'ora bene per cui avanti tutta chiaramente voi state collegati con motocross my passion eh, starò vicino al team honda nils con grande rispetto e con grande passione, per cui avanti tutta Fabio e dita incrociate per tutto. Grazie mille, <ride> ciao a tutti.
E amici appassionati e con grande rispetto e onore che vi presento Kyle Peters. Hi Carl. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, for me too. And uh, so, you ready to start the new season in uh, WSX uh, Championship? You come through about the four, four titles in uh, Arena Cross yep. consecutive. Yep. And so, <laughs> after. Uh, a big, uh, big uh, crash, but I don't want to speak about uh, the crash. Yeah. And so, tell us uh, something. Uh, welcome, welcome in Italy. First Thank you. Of all. And so, a very big family in Honda Niels. Absolutely. And so, you have a very good smile. And so, <laughs> it's good. Thank you. Yeah, it's I'm uh, very excited to be here in Italy, uh, especially with the Honda Niels team. Uh, they've treated me just so so great and uh very appreciative for that um and i'm very excited to start the wsx um we've been putting in, putting in a lot of work um doing a lot of testing and getting the bike uh comfortable sorted. yes yeah. very comfortable with it um and yeah i'm uh ready to get ready, going ready, yeah. ready. <laughs> you're looking for the championship that's the plan yeah. um you know it's, it's good we're gonna have a lot of really really talented riders um yeah. So go out there, give it everything we got. <laughs> Good. Finger crossed for everything. Yes. <laughs> and so yesterday night uh, I, I saw all, uh, your journey, your career journey, you know, and uh, so compliments. <laughs> Thank you. Very, Thank you. very from the heart. You ride very well and uh, you strong mentally. Yep. Because. Thank you. Uh, the journey is n yeah. was not easy. <laughs> easy. It was. It's definitely been a, a, a <laughs> tough journey, um, but, but very blessed to be here with this team, yeah. uh, having my team back home, and mm -hmm. and just everyone involved. Um, I couldn't do it without all of their help. Um, everyone back home, just the whole support system. <laughs> I feel. Uh, I feel you like a. Uh, my little brother <laughs> because <laughs> you live in, in also my town yes uh, in, yes uh, in greensboro north carolina yeah so good bring back uh, many memories for me yeah uh, so 77 uh, to 95 96 uh, yeah we'll so have to get you back over there yeah yeah soon definitely soon, definitely soon. i have some parents in uh, in west virginia okay so, uh, yeah back and through uh, come on over we'll see you <laughs> we'll see you you start a pro uh, pro rider in uh, 2011 mm -hmm. right yeah and so yeah i did uh a couple races after uh the loretta loretta, loretta Lynn title yeah. um i did two races after that and then went full-time pro in 2012. 12. yeah and so your best result in ama is the second the second yeah second i saw the 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 daytona races yes <laughs> so yes. go with the good the go <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've uh, had some good finishes at daytona as well um but just a couple podiums always want to yeah. do better but yeah we jumped through to san luis i don't want to remember yeah. <laughs> san luis please uh, you scared me definitely me too so, uh, yeah, yeah i know but uh, you're strong and so yeah. easy Easy yes. with a nice smile, good, uh, good proposition. And so, thank you. It's coming all easy. Yeah, easy, easy. And so, give the 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 regards to Motocross My Patient TV. Yeah. And so, we follow you all the championship. And yeah. We see you on the the, the track and. Uh, Today we are uh, on the Pellegrini compound, uh, nice track. Yes, very nice track, <laughs> uh, great conditions, perfect for what we need it for. So yeah. uh, thankful they let us come ride and, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, it's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna be a great season. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because thank you so much, Kyle, and uh, see you yeah. on the track uh, about the five minutes. Thank okay? you for, thank you for thank having you. me and thank you. let's go. Thank you, let's go.
a, you know, gate malfunction that just completely throws them off. Like, way to break the ice, fellas. You know? Yeah, right. So on our far right here on our screen, the 19, the MDK rider, just a Bogle, is a rider who rode 250s last year, 250 champion from America, and he had the roughest go of, I think, of anyone throughout the championship last year, the two-race championship we had. And Bogle's a little bit, he's a little bit banged up right now, recovering from injury. But I think uh, as this championship goes on, he's going to put up some great results. All right, here we go again. Let's First do it again, Ralph. Ready to go in the gate. SX2 championship is underway. Headed towards Chaos Corner. Who's going to get there first? Oh, and unless he tried to go wide, it's only going to come, come out, out for of the, the fifth. Lead. We see the seven running in second place, Mitchell Oldenburg. Oldenburg swinging wide to that second corner. And it's the 110 that jumps out into the early lead. Kyle Peters. Kyle Peters, right. So, and there's the 67. In the style of racing that he's accustomed to with arena cross, short starts, short races, you got to be quick. I mean, the gate drops, you got to go. There's no time to settle in. That's what I'm telling you, Kyle Peters might be kind of the sleeper in this, uh, the new guy that we've added to the roster here in the SX2 division. There's the big, huge finish line jump here in Birmingham. As we watch the seven of Oldenburg out in Texas on that Moto Concepts Honda. And everybody chasing Kyle Peters right now, Kristen. Ralph, Kyle Peters has a remarkable story. In April 9th of 2022, he first fractured his C5 and C6 vertebrae in his neck. They fused his C4 through T1, resulting in six fused vertebrae. They weren't even sure if he'd ever walk again, nonetheless ride. He went on to win the Arena Cross Championship this past year, and that was his fourth title to date. And now to be here racing in the World Supercross Championship after being told he may never walk again, it is remarkable to see him leading this race, guys. It truly is, but he's got his hands full right now because he's got the seven closing in. Mitchell Oldenburg coming after him on the Moto Concepts Honda. Well, you just have to go back to the 2022 championship and remember how spectacular Mitchell Oldenburg was. Uh, had a couple of mishaps that really cost him in the points, but speed-wise, Oldenburg was one of the fastest. You notice the line choice, Ralph. Peters went inside to jump through the whoops. Oldenburg outside. Oh, he's oh, outside no. the track. Oldenburg right off the track. He's got to get back on as quick as he can and safely, which he does. Wow. Quick look to the right to see who's coming along. Plenty of space, but boy, he lost a lot of time there, Jeff. Yeah. Not only did he go outside before the whoops, he went outside the... Here's yeah, watch right here. So he's going to try to triple out of this, and he just spins a little, loses his balance, goes off, and, oh, he hits something there, maybe some sort of light or pyro stand or something. Boom, right there. Wow. Well, that's going to give a little bit of uh, breathing room here for Kyle Peters as this short heat race is winding down. Huge advantage for Peters now and that Nils World Supercross team on the Honda. Oldenburg still hanging on to second, Park and Alessi and Lopes. Lopes with that dislocated shoulder in practice finds himself in fifth in this heat with 10 riders. That's impressive, Jeff, for Lopes. Working the final lap Yeah, I mean, here. with the dislocated shoulder. And um, we, we talked a little bit with Chad Reed earlier in the qualifying shows about how you can ride with a dislocated shoulder because it's all swelled up right now, right? Look how quick Oldenburg has caught back up to Peters. He might make a run at him here on this final lap. Here they come through this whoop section. Well, he was really good through this rhythm right here. Watch what he's doing. He's double, closing. No, he didn't, he didn't jump. That was kind of a double triple there that he made up some time, but not that time. Not enough. Here they come. Final corner. Kyle Peters wins SX2 heat number one here in Birmingham. And it looks like Oldenburg will have to settle for second. Park Cullen will take third. Enzo Lopes with the dislocated shoulder and all Jeff comes across the line in fourth. He was able to grab another spot on that final lap. So he moves up to fourth. Michael Lessey, decent start, not as good as he had hoped, is fifth. And wow, what a great way to start the season for Kyle Peters as the Honda Nil squad puts their Honda atop this group here in SX2 Heat 1.
Well, that's a great way to start off the championship, uh, certainly uh, with a new rider also. So Honda Nils has got to be really pleased that they were able to sign and secure Kyle Peters for this for this ride. Let's hear job. from the winner standing by with Kristen. Kyle, you're playing it cool. I am super emotional right now because I know your story. At one point, you weren't sure if you'd ever race a motorcycle again. So all the blood, sweat and tears paying off here with this heat win. It may just be a heat win, but you have to feel all the heart and the soul in this that you put into racing. Yeah, definitely. This has been a lot of hard work put into this. Uh, a year ago, I didn't know if I would ever race again or ride a dirt bike. So uh, all the glory to God, you know, uh, my Honda team, Niels, and uh, Jack and Mo, my, my whole support system back home. We put in a lot of work. My coach, Corey, Golden Max, Phoenix, just everyone. And uh, yeah, I'm pumped, but uh, work's not done. Let's uh, go make it happen in the mains. And you'll have three GP races ahead of you. Kyle, get some rest. We'll see you out there. And congratulations. What a remarkable story, guys about World Supercross, Kristen. These racers are such incredible warriors, Jeff. We see them get beat up, banged up, and they fight through like Kyle Peters did, like Enzo Lopes did, just to get into fourth here, get himself a good gate pick for the GPs coming up. What a way to kick off the WSX season here. And we've got another SX2 heat ready to go in the gate, and there is the 99 Max Anstey ready to go. Well, Anstey's certainly one of the crowd favorites. I mean, he's local from here, uh, grew up not far from here, and uh, just just so much crowd support for him. But like I mentioned earlier in this in this pre-show, he 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 really has been riding the Supercross actual you know segment style of Supercross better uh, better than he ever has in his entire career, and he's he's one of the favorites for this championship, if you ask me. 11 riders, another five laps, racing for gate picks for the GPs coming up a little later on in the program here tonight. There's Luke Clout, this young Australian, Jeff. A lot of folks think he might be the one that gives Shane McElrath the most of a fight for that championship plate. Well, that's that's for sure, and Craig Dak Racing uh, actually has both of his riders, Aaron Tonti right there next to him, uh, big hopes for both of the Yamaha riders from Australia. Uh, they both show quite a bit of speed. Uh, Clout was fastest in his qualifying uh, session earlier today, so he has the speed to win. Well, if you're looking for somebody else that a lot of folks are talking about in the preseason, this man here, Chris Blos out of Phoenix, Arizona, back in the U.S., a lot of people think he could be one to give McElrath the run for that championship, ladies. You see Shane just to his right. And there is Shane McElrath, the reigning champion. Comes from Canton, North Carolina, racing for Rick Ware. He'll be on a Yamaha this season. The defending champ, the Mobile One livery. Yeah, and you know, he, he, t he told us earlier in a press conference that he'd never been out of the country until the first race last, last year. Last year in Cardiff in, in Wales. Here he is, the reigning world champion in the SX2 division. And uh, he's going to add a few stamps to that passport yeah, this year. He's had some airline miles, that's for sure. All right, here we go. Getting ready for SX heat number two for the SX2 category. See, McElrath really taking some time to shake his goggles out and put his goggles on quite a bit later than the rest of the riders. Good look at the 604 Max Miller right there, the MDK entry. There goes the board. All right, everybody gets leaned down over the handlebars. The revs will come up. Here we go, racing towards Chaos Corner. Oh. Who's going to get there first? Coming around riders. the outside is the three machine of Chris Blows, the rider out of Arizona, and he quickly loses that spot to who else? Max Anstey, and that brings a crowd here in Birmingham onto their feet. And Ralph, we talked about Luke Clout early on. He missed a shift or something off the start. He was two or three bike links behind everybody. He's, he's uh, probably fifth right now. And Jeff blows right back to the front of the field as he gets right back around Anstey. And jumping into the fray here is the 401 of Jace Owen, the rider out of Mattoon, Illinois, on the Yamaha. So Owen making some noise early on. Here he is. Oh, so the riders, they're a little bit different line there before the finish line jump than what they would have had uh, in their final qualifying practice. Here comes McElrath on, on the one bit. in the black riding gear. He's right to the backside of Owen. He gets inside, and he moves himself up to third. 
So McElrath, the reigning champion in this category, is in third here. And SX2, heat number two, right behind one of the folks who's supposed to be a nemesis for this championship, Max Anstey. Oh, and not done. Look at that, the 401 fighting back on the reigning champ. Yeah, a little bit different line right there. Probably lap time-wise, going wide and skimming the whoops uh, is the fastest way, but also position-wise, Owen trying to take advantage of just taking this shorter line to the inside, trying to block him out. Didn't work that time, but if he's a little bit closer next lap around, could happen. Blows McElrath right in here. Well, Blows a veteran. Oh, here he is, certainly. McElrath loses a spot as Anstey comes flying past. So Blos is the leader, Anstey goes to second, McElrath slips back to third, and Owen just in front of Clout, that's your top five. Yeah, now watch right there. So McElrath trying two different lines, tripled before the whoops, went outside. Maybe maybe a little quicker overall, lap time-wise, like I said. It's putting him right on the rear tire of the local boy, Max Anstey. But Chris, Chris Blos has just has clear track laying down perfect lap times. Blows doing a tremendous job. And Jeff, don't forget, he tried to retire and they pulled him back into this. So, you know, it takes a little bit to get your race legs back under you. He doesn't seem to be having a problem with it, though. It, you know, and being one of the veteran riders, he knows how to prepare. He knows his body. He knows what he needs to do as far as practicing and training. And he's getting it done right here because I'm telling you, in my book, Anstey and McElrath are the two favorites for this SX2 World Championship, and he's keeping them at bay here in this heat race. Well, they're going to have three GPs coming up in a little bit to settle it tonight. Oh, man, McElrath tried to get back inside, but Anstey railed around the outside of that berm and carried the speed as we begin the final lap here of SX2, heat number two. Yeah, a couple of split lanes here where McElrath seems to have some good speed, and he's out there searching. Looking for a, a, a passing spot. Let's see if he goes a different line. Yes, yeah, so he splits off again. Watch what he's going to do. He's going to triple here. Goes outside. Go way wide and then just hard on the throttle. Skim across, but Look can't, really, speed he can't really do anything with it. Now in that finish line corner, Ralph, he's going to be right there. He's on him. Here we go. Anstey's holding down second. McElrath is closing. Blows first one to the final corner. Blows takes the win here, but here comes McElrath and Anstey to the line. Anstey is just going to get him. Max Anstey will take second place in front of Shane McElrath, the reigning champ here in SX2, heat number two in Birmingham as we begin the 2023 season. But Chris Blows has to be absolutely thrilled with that, Jeff. He put the whole thing together. Oh, yeah. A great start. Gets through chaos corner just fine. And now he's the winner of SX2, heat number two. There's the results showing you the official finish. Kyle Peters won heat number one. Blos is going to win heat number two. So the Americans take the first two heat races in the SX2 category. I mean, Good huh? crowd on hand here at Villa Park. Everybody still making their way in on a beautiful July 1st evening here. And let's go downstairs to Kristen. Chris, in January, you were retired mid-season. You were on a Pro Circuit Kawasaki, now on a Honda Mills bike. Chris, what is behind this second win? Oh, you know what? I'm just having so much fun, and uh, my Honda Mills bike is working great. I'm loving it. We're here in England. We got an amazing crowd, and that just helps so much. We got three main events, so I'm really looking forward to that. Chris, a lot of riders have told me that the big start-finish line jump has been giving them some trouble. What is your strategy to work around it? It seemed as though you have it figured out. Yeah, you know what, the finish line is pretty tricky, especially with the turn before it, the split lane. So, you know, we're just going to see how the main plays out. Getting a good drive up to it is going to be key and uh, clearing it all the way. Clearing it all the way is going to be key as well. Thanks, Chris. Congratulations. Jeff, I got to think the Honda Nil squad has to be thrilled. There are two riders in the SX2 category take the two heat wins. Oh, uh, yeah, just a great way to start it out. They feel good about their preparation and everything now. They get ready for these mains, but this is a good shot of the finish line jump. Kristen mentioned to Chris there about that finish line and they're jumping the finish line and having to work for the distance is not something that they usually have to do. So keep an eye on that as this night continues. There's a look at the results making it official for SX2 heat number two. Close. Clout, Anstey, McElrath, Tanti, Miller, 
Tanti. It's a good solid run here in this one. I'm not sure why Clout even showed up there on that one, but uh, solid run anyway. Yeah, two two pretty good heat races, and you know we spend the first part of the day, Ralph, watching qualifying practice, right? So you're watching the riders going out there trying to do a single lap, get their fastest lap time. But that's only part of the day. The other part is, hey, we get to the racing, okay? So lap times are one thing, but racing the track. And then what we saw there with McElrath trying to choose some different lines, trying to work his way past Anstey. Uh, so, so for me as the rider, I kind of keep an eye on that. How is the track going to change, and how will the riders utilize different lines in a race that they might not choose if they were just trying to set a fast lap time, right? So two different, two different things here. Jeff, I think the pressure is building now. These guys all know it's about to get really serious. They've all dreamed of being not just race winners, but champions. And starting tonight, one of these riders in either this gate or the next one is going to be crowned a world champion at the end of these six championship rounds. And it all begins right here in Birmingham, at Villa Park. Yeah, and the riders have to go through a heat race possibly super pole that'll be based off of off of uh, your heat finish and then See Dean Wilson sitting three right races. there on the 15 yeah and then three races that make up the three GPs, the GP yeah. so the amount of gate drops the amount of starts and everything that they have to put in for this championship is pretty incredible the potential for things to go wrong is massive and you've got to execute on every level your fitness your bike setup, your race craft, everything has to be just perfect. And you've got to be lucky, Jeff. And that might be the toughest part. See Rick Ware walking down there, going over to his rider, Joey Savacci. Gentleman with the Mobile One livery on the back of his shirt. And there's Dean. Justin Hill's going to be on the 46 right next to him. And we see the 80 machine of Kevin Morans. Yeah, Kevin Morans. He's got an interesting, he's got a crowdsourcing opportunity that he has with his gear. He, uh, if you go to his website, you can donate to his, uh, to his championship run here, and he'll put your name on his jerseys. He's already got names on his forearms, even some that have been written in with a Sharpie today. So check out Kevin Morans on that. That'll be the number 80. You can look at Kyle Peters. He's riding the PMG Suzuki teammates with Ken Roxon. Jeff, during the preseason, I had an opportunity to record a series we're calling WSXU. For those of you that are maybe new to the World Supercross Championship, we want to help get you up to speed as to how this genre of motorsport takes place. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about technique a range of techniques are adapted into supercross racing which creates versatile and well-rounded riders to combat all terrains jump sizes corners and whoop sections they say jump for show corner for dough the reality is in modern day supercross, airtime is now considered almost as much a contributor to the lap time as cornering. With techniques such as soaking and scrubbing designed to return the wheels to the ground faster. Conversely, techniques such as the seat bounce are designed for added height and distance. The additional body weight compressing the shock and unloading on the up ramp. This technique can be especially beneficial when immediately exiting a corner or when an obstacle requires additional height and distance. The rear brake tap is another specific in-air technique where the rider engages the clutch then steps on their rear brake which snaps the rear wheel to a halt. This action disrupts the trajectory of the motorcycle, bringing the front end down which may be especially important on jumps that require the seat bounce.
cornering is where the real time is made up. With entry, mid, and corner exit speed, all considered separate components to the hole. It's important that the rider look to where they would like to go and be in tune with their throttle, clutch, and brake as they look to maintain their lean angle from their momentum that they're carrying. Corners can vary from ruts to sweepers, with each utilizing a specific technique. Oh! 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 The whoop section is regarded as one of the most challenging parts of a supercross circuit, with riders required to completely commit to staying on top if they blitz, ensuring they hit each one with their front wheel. Jumping has become commonplace in recent years, and riders will make the decision between blitzing and jumping based on spacing and degradation as to which strategy they employ. World-class Supercross collects the very best athletes across the world, and in order to make it in this sport, it's pivotal that a rider arrive and continue to hone their technique to keep up with the demands of the machines and the obstacles. Siamo a Birmingham insieme al team manager Honda Nils, cosa dire Fabio, Fabio Derin, eh, due piloti in due, in due race, vittoriosi tutti e due, parliamo di Kyle Peters e Chris Blosa. Che emozione hai avuto, indescrivibile immagino, perché la tua sì. prima esperienza come team manager. Non potevamo iniziare meglio, due piloti, due manche, due primi posti nella due e mezzo, eh, molto, tutta, tutta ad un fiato, non ho respirato per tutta la, la manche di tutte e due le gare e non potevamo aspettarci di meglio. In quattro e mezzo siamo uh, a metà classifica, quindi anche lì non male, Abbiamo ampio margine di miglioramento lì, eh, vediamo in gara. Eh sì, con Morenze e Tixie. Per cui Fabio, cosa dire, aspettiamo con ansia le altre race per chiudere poi il primo evento di questo W6 fantastico organizzato nel migliore dei modi intanto in bocca al lupo e adesso cerca di abbassare l'adrenalina che ne hai tanta <ride> grazie mille e ci vediamo dopo le manche di, di gara ciao ragazzi sono Enrico Tomasin sono motorista e tecnico anche elettronico del team Honda Nils oggi come prima gara qui allo stadium di Birmingham abbiamo avuto una buona prova fino adesso dei nostri piloti della 2.5 con Chris Blows e Kylie Peters vincitori di due le manche di qualifica. Eh, le moto vanno bene, abbiamo lavorato tanto durante questi sei mesi che ci hanno separato dall'ultima gara fino a imbarcare le moto, quindi eh, insomma, siamo molto, molto felici. E adesso dita incrociate e guardiamo le tre finali. Ciao! Bellissima esperienza, la mia prima esperienza è un'esperienza da ripetere perché comunque va, va rivissuta, bella, 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 non me l'aspettavo, prima di tutto visto dalla televisione, visto dal vivo sono due cose totalmente diverse, eh, gli spazi, la velocità, eh, i passaggi che fanno, quello che si vede in tele non, è, non rende l'idea, almeno parlo per me, cioè a vederlo dal vivo e poi vedendo, facendo proprio anche eh, la, la, diciamo il giro di pista anche insieme ai piloti che è stata veramente anche una cosa emozionante 
cioè gli spazi sono piccoli, quando li vedi che si sorpassano è qualcosa che non sembra neanche vero. Poi anche quelli che possono essere i tripli, cioè visti alla tele non rendono l'idea, le rampe sono dire in piedi è poco, sembra un muro. Vabbè insomma, la figata, è da, è da provare. Lo stadio poi è vestito a festa in questo modo dove di solito ci sono, eh, dove ci sono le squadre di calcio. Eh, ha, una, ha un fascino un po' particolare no? perché generalmente uno si immagina di, di vivere il motocross solo in una direzione di vederlo nei classici circuiti ci sta anche questa versione che è un pochettino più chiamiamolo patinata eh, per dare un'espressione corretta però c'è sempre la sua bella componente di adrenalina che è quella che mette a posto tutto quindi no, bello, da ripetere, da ripetere ragazzi, da ripetere. Finished up uh, WSX2 uh, first T race. Uh, I was uh, couldn't ask for anything better. Got off to a great start, uh, hole shotted, put in some clean laps. Uh, track was really good, flat um, as the first one usually is, and uh, yeah, got up front. Was able to take my first T race win, and looking forward to main events. <laughs> We'll see the next one. Yeah, okay? Absolutely. Work, okay. Work's not done. So <laughs> let's keep it going. I still there. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, Chris Pelosi. You know, we just got done with the World Supercross Heat Race 2 in the SX2 class. Got the win and super happy about that. Got off to a great start. And I was right behind Max Ancy. Um, he made a small mistake at the end of the rhythm section and I capitalized on that and just started riding clean laps. Um, hit my marks, my breathing points, and felt really good. So, um, track's really good in good condition right now. So, you know, we got three main events, a lot can happen. Hopefully, we stay out of all the chaos, get off to three great starts, and uh, yeah, we'll be back here in a little bit. Pretty solid. Um, <clears throat> first heat of World Supercross, I think I ended up P5. So, uh, you know, finished behind Brayton, which is pretty good. Kind of ran his pace for a little bit. I just got to pick it up a little bit in the whoops, find a little bit more flow. And I think I can run those guys' pace. It just depends on how bad the track breaks down, to be honest, because those they have a little bit more experience, and uh, with the track breaking down and whatnot. So, other than that, pretty solid. I think we might make a few changes. We did a lot of changes all day. We went 13:52 uh, in gearing right before that race, and it was a little bit better. Uh, good hole shot, so that's what we need, and we'll continue doing it. So, other than that, pretty solid. Yeah, at first uh, eat was. Uh it was not tough, but I just rode my own pace, you know, as I'm riding on practice, but I missed some intensity compared to the other guys. So, yeah, I was only riding motocross the last few weeks. I mean, racing motocross the last few weeks, so... Uh, I just made a, I just need a bit more racing, a little bit more intensity, and... For the rest, it will come, you know, I feel comfy on the bike, so that's the most important for the rest. I think it just will come start after start, so... Uh, that's the goal, you know, for the three main, uh, just trying to improve my riding all the time and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life.
I never miss that stack Taking big swings, jam to the back Put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag Cause I sing what I mean and I bring it to the mad life Ain't got time to kill, I got time to fail I took the red pill, I know life's short So I wanna live real, but how's it supposed to feel? And I don't feel no shame, it's a mood you lack I go crazy, nah, I ain't lazy Track after track, I work on this shit daily have to feel all the heart and the soul in this that you put into racing Yeah, definitely, this has been a lot of hard work put into this uh, A year ago, I didn't know if I would ever race again Or ride a bike, so uh, All the glory to God, you know uh, My Honda team, Niels And uh, Jack and Mo my, my whole support system back home We put in a lot of work my coach Corey, Golden Max, Phoenix, just everyone. And uh, yeah, I'm pumped, but uh, work's not done. Let's uh, go make it happen in the mains. And you'll have three GP races ahead of you, Kyle. Get some rest. We'll see you out there. And congratulations. What a remarkable story, guys. Chris, in January, you were retired mid-season. You were on a pro circuit Kawasaki, now on a Honda Mills bike. Chris, what is behind this second win? Oh, you know what? I'm just having so much fun. And uh, my Honda Nils bike is working great. I'm loving it. We're here in England. We got an amazing crowd, and that just helps so much. We got three main events, so I'm really looking forward to that. Chris, a lot of riders have told me that the big start-finish line jump has been giving them some trouble. What is your strategy to work around it? It seemed as though you have it figured out. Yeah, you know what? The finish line is pretty tricky, especially with the turn before it, the split lane. So, you know, we're just going to see how the main plays out. Getting a good drive up to it is going to be key and uh, clearing it all the way. Clearing it all the way is going to be key as well. Thanks, Chris. Congratulations. Jeff, I got to think the Honda Nil squad has to be thrilled. Their two riders in the SX2 category take the two heat wins. Oh, uh, yeah, just a great way to start it out. They feel good about their preparation and everything now. They get ready for these mains. But this is a good shot of the finish line jump. E siamo arrivati purtroppo a fine puntata dopo le tantissime emozioni che ci ha scatenato il primo round del VSX, campionato del mondo, Supercross, gara che si è svolta a Birmingham e in Inghilterra con i piloti che avete visto di grandissimo livello, pubblico eccezionale, organizzazione perfetta. Per cui Motocross My Passion ha seguito con un occhio di riguardo il team Honda Nils gestito da Fabio Derin con Enrico Tomasin che è il motorista ufficiale del team e con tutti gli altri componenti ovviamente un saluto particolare va Giacomo Gariboldi, team owner eh, cosa dire, Motocross My Passion ci sarà anche per i prossimi round per cui seguiremo tutto il campionato con grandissima emozione per regalarvi appunto più Supercross in televisione vi ricordo di seguirci sui nostri canali social il nostro sito www.motocrossmypassion.it, sul nostro canale YouTube Motocross My Passion TV, dove mettiamo e inseriamo tutte le puntate andate in onda televisivamente, questo dal martedì successivo. Intanto vi saluto, ho quasi finito la voce, per cui vi saluto, vi auguro un buon proseguimento di serata e vi ricordo che Motocross My Passion c'è.